Welcome to this tutorial on creating a multiplayer tic-tac-toe game using Unity Netcode and Relay. In this video, we shall learn how to create a multiplayer tic-tac-toe game and that can be played with friends over the internet. We shall talk through the setup of Netcode which will handle the synchronization of game data between players and Relay which will ensure load latency gameplay for players regardless of their location. By the end of the tutorial, you will have the knowledge to create your own multiplayer games with Unity. Let's get started. Let's create a new project. Now we will create a board or tic tac toe. To create a board, at first we will create a panel. Resize the panel as a square. Now position the panel at the center of the canvas using anchor preset. Click on the Alt button and press on the middle. Now it, the panel will be repositioned to the middle. Now click on the canvas on the hierarchy and make the scale mode to scale with screen size. Now resize the panel as needed. I will make the height 10 width as 700 now I will change the color of the panel now click on the main camera and make the skybox as solid color and make the camera projection to orthographic and I will change the background color let's go to panel and we will make cell inside the panel using button let's create button Now click on the panel and click on the add component in the inspector and search for grid layout group and attach this to panel. This grid layout group will automatically position the cells inside the board. Now we need to change the configuration of grid layout group I am making the cell size as 200 by 200 and I am making the left padding 25 right also 25 and top and bottom also size 25 now we need to make the space between cells now you can change the configuration as needed now I am changing the cell that is the button color click on the button and change the color inside the image component we need total 9 cells so we need to duplicate this button 8 times We can delete the text children of the buttons, then duplicate. We can use Ctrl plus D to duplicate. Now I am renaming the buttons as cell 00, cell 01, cell 02, cell 10, cell 11, cell 12, cell 20 cell 21 and cell 22 now basic setup of our tic tac toe board is ready now we will install unity netcode for that go to window and package manager let's 
got to unit registry search netboard or game objects and click on the install we are installing version one part two point zero now netboard for game objects has been installed go to hierarchy and create an empty game object name it as network manager go to inspector of network manager and reset the transform let's add a network manager component for that click on add component and go to netcode folder and then click on network manager now the network manager component has been added now inside network manager select transport as unity transport let's save the scene and enter into play mode we are adding the talent scene in the build settings click on the yes in the network manager we can see there are option to start host and stopping host and there are option to start server and stop server and you can start as client and stop the client let's turn off the play mode now create an empty game object name it as game manager now reset the transform of the game object Let's create a folder and name it as scripts. Let's create a C sharp script and name it as game manager. Now attach the game manager script to game manager game object. Now we will edit the game manager script. We shall make this game manager class as a single door class. For that, create a public static instance of this game manager class. Now we will check inside the add method if there is already an instance of this class or not. If instance not equal to null and instance not equal to this. then we will destroy the game object else if there is no instance then we shall assign this object as a instance now we need to write to public functions to start the magic post or as a client for starting as a post we need to call the start host function of network manager class network manager is a singleton class and to use network manager class we need to use the unity netcode namespace and we are writing the start client function we also call this from network manager to single term now come back to unity and rename the canvas as board Let's create a canvas again to add the buttons to start host and client and add two buttons inside it. We have created a new canvas because we will make that board canvas as a prefab letter.
now we have created two vatas start host and start client now we will end function to these vatas click on start host function and add a on click function to do that drag and drop the game manager object and select the start host function from game manager class now we can click on the start host button and drag and drop the game manager object and select the start client function from the game manager class let's save the scene now we will make this board canvas as a prefab let's create an folder name it as prefabs now inside this prefab folder we will drag and drop the board canvas now we can delete the board prefab from the hierarchy now we will again in the game manager script now we will check if any client has been joined or not to do that we will register the on client connected callback event of network manager class when any client will join the server then we will print the client id now we will make a build to test check on the development build so while we will play the build if there is any error we can see let's build Now we are running two instances of our game. Let start host on Unity side. We can see that client zero joined message on console. Now we are starting client on build. And again we can see that client with ID one has joined message. When any client will join, we will check how many total clients are there. If there are two clients, then we will spawn our tic tac toe board. We can get all connected clients list from network manager class and we will check the list count. If equal to two, then we will print a log to spawn that we need to spawn the tic tac toe board. again we will test we are starting as host on unity side and on build we are starting as client no problem on host side we can see that there is an error on client side that is connected clients should only be accessed on server so client cannot access the connected clients list as only host or server can access the connected clients list so we will check whether this is host or not if this is host then we will count the connected clients number if the connected clients number equal to 2 then we will spawn the board remember that host is also a client so one host and one client will be total two clients we will write a spawn function here that will spawn the board so for that we are making a serialized game object field for board prefab then inside the spawn board function we will instantiate the board prefab now we are calling if there is connected class number equal to 2 
Now click on the game manager and on the board prefab field drag the board prefab from project folder and drop on the board prefab field of game manager then save and now we will make and build again now again we are running finished access of our game we are starting as host on unity and starting as client on the build side so when two players have been connected the board prefab has been instantiated but we can't see any board on the build that is on the client so for that we need to attach a network object component to the prefab so let's during the run time we will try to add the network object on this cloned board prefab so we have attached and we can see an spawn button if we click on the spawn button then we can see an error on the client side The error is that network prefab could not be found. Is the prefab registered with network manager? So we need to register our board prefab with the network manager. Now click on network manager in the hierarchy and we can see a player prefab field in the inspector. The player prefab field is used for player character which will be spawned on each client when the client will join with server as tic tac to game has no player character so we will keep this field empty and we can see a network prefabs field to register our board prefab with network manager we need to add the board prefab in this network prefabs list let's click on the add button and we need to try and drop the board prefab here After adding the board prefab in the network prefabs list, we get an error that network prefab board it does not contain any network object. So we need to add a network object component to this board prefab. Click on the board prefab and in the inspector click on add component and go to net code folder and attach the network object component now save the scene as soon as the board prefab will be instantiated we need to spawn this network object on each device or each client so we need to edit the spawn board function of game manager let's create the network object component of game board get component network object and call the spawn function now save the script Now we will test again. Let's start as host on unit side and start as client on build. Now, as soon as the two players have been connected, the board has been instantiated and spawned on each side. But no game logic has been implemented yet. If I click on the board cell, nothing is happening. For that, we need to run the game logic. Let's create an script. Now for game logic, we will attach 
হচ্ছে স্ক্রিপ্ট অন দ্য বোর্ড প্রিপেয়ার লেটস গো ইন সাইড দ্য স্ক্রিপ্ট ফোল্ডার অ্যান্ড ক্রিয়েট এ স্ক্রিপ্ট নেম ইট অ্যাজ বোর্ড ম্যানেজার নাও উই উইল অ্যাটাচ দিস বোর্ড ম্যানেজার অন দ্য বোর্ড প্রিপেয়ার লেটস গো ইন সাইড প্রিপেয়ার ফোল্ডার অ্যান্ড ক্লিপ অন দ্য বোর্ড অ্যান্ড কম্পোনেন্ট অন ইন্সপেক্টর ক্লিক অন অ্যান্ড কম্পোনেন্ট and go to the scripts folder and attach the board manager script now the board manager script has been attached to the board prefab let's edit edit this script we will edit the board manager script at first we need to use the unity netcode package let's import unity.netcode namespace as this board manager script is attached to board prefab which is a network object so we use network behavior rather than mono behavior we will inherit the board manager class from network behavior let's use network behavior at first we shall make an to array of buttons for the nine buttons of board's children as board manager is attached to board prefab which is a network object so we shall use on network spawn function instead of start function let's override the on network spawn function public override void on network spawn now we will fetch all the buttons of the board for that we need cell use get components get components in children box we will get all the buttons component of the board's children for button we need to use the input engine dot ui now the get components in children will return an array of buttons now the sales sales array we will hold the all buttons now we will make this sales array as a to d array now we will declare a to d array for buttons let's name it as buttons this will be an 3 cross 3 for array now we shall initialize this to d buttons array with the buttons of sales are let's use to for loops to initialize the buttons to the button are actually we can rewrite the game logic as you want this is not related to multiplayer now we got and to the array of the board buttons now we will write a function for when the buttons will be clicked let's write a function now we will 
we'll write a function for on bottom click let's create a private word function and name it as on cell click on, on click cell we will send the row and column parameter of the button that means which button has been clicked now we will call this one click cell function when any button subboard will be clicked Now we will add one click add listener. Now when the button will be click, then the one click cell function will be called, and we will pass the parameter RNC. We need to use delegate here. Let's call one click cell and pass the RNC. Keep remember don't send the IJ, copy them on any variable and then pass. Now when any button will be clicked, we will check if the button is clicked by host or client. If the button is clicked by host, then we will change the button sprite edge x so basically we will do when any button will be clicked by host then we will change the button sprite edge x and when the button or board cell will be clicked by client then we will change the sprite to button edge o so we will check again if the button is clicked by any client then we will change the button sprite as you and then we will make the button non interactable because one button will be clicked only once Now we will write code. If we will check this is host or client, for that we use network manager dot singleton dot each host. Now we will get the image component from the clicked button dot get component image now we will change the sprite as x sprite. For expect we need to make some serialized field where we can assign our sprites. Let's create expect and O sprite. This will be private sprite we are declaring. Now we will assign to our click water. Now again we will check else if this is clicked by client
similarly we will check like the network manager dot single to dot is client if this is clear by client then we change the click button sprite when any button will be clicked we will get the row and column number of that button and we are taking the mm, button using the index row column index and after taking that button we are changing the sprite of that button and if the button is clicked by client then we are changing the button sprite as your sprite now we will make the button as non interactable Okay. Interactable equal to false. Now save this script and go back to unit editor. Now we will assign the X and O sprite. For that we need to create a folder named it as sprite. And inside this sprite folder we will import two image. Now import the X and O image. Now we will make these two images as a sprite. For this, click on these two images. And in the inspector, change the texture type as a sprite. Now click on apply. Now let's Go to the prefab folder. Click on the board prefab. And now we will assign the external sprite of board manager. Let's select the RX sprite. And again we need to select sprite. Now let's build a test. Now we can wear that edge post on the unity side and on the build we are near edge client. Now our board has instantiated. Now if we click on a button and post the side, post button sprite has been changed, but no change on client side. Now if we Click on client side, then no change on first side. Now, when we are changing the sprite of the button, we need to change also opposite sides button as well. That means when we are changing the sprite of first, we need to change the button sprite of client. And when we are changing the client sprite, then we need to also change the host sprite. Let's code. Now, when we are changing the host button sprite, then also change the client side button sprite. Similarly, when we are changing on client side, then also need to change on host side. We need to make remote procedure call to make change on other side. To change client side button sprite when clicking on host side, we need to call client RPC. For that, we need to use client RPC attribute. We are writing a function to change sprite on client side when button clicked on host side. Let's create a private word change sprite function. Keep remember to use client RPC suffix on method name for a client RPC method. And we will pass the index of the button which sprite need to be changed.
let's change the sprite of the button with that index we will get the image component as when host will be clicked then we are changing the sprite with x so we need to change the sprite of this button as x sprite for host click so when host will be clicked then both side buttons will be changed with x sprite Similarly, we will write an function which will be called to client server when client buttons will be clicked. For that, we need to use server RPC and we will write and change image, change sprite, server RPC function. Keep remember to use server RPC and suffix on the method name or server RPC call. Similarly, we will pass the index and we will change the sprite of this button with O sprite because we when we will click on client, then the button will be changed with O sprite and similarly the O sprite will be on server side also. Now call the change sprite server RPC function when client side button will be clicked and pass the index and similarly when host side button will be clicked call the client RPC. And pass the index. Now again we are testing. Let's start host on the build and start as client on the unity side. Now the board has instance setting and we click on the button of the host side. As you have clicked on the host, we can see that client also being changed. But when we are clicking on the board, client's board button, then there are e your but on click on server both side is working fine the error is only the owner can invoke a server rpc that requires ownership and remember that any network spawn object is owned by server by default until we change one RC. But here we are trying to call server RPC method of board manager from client side. But board is owned by host. So let's go to script. So by default, only owner can invoke this server RPC method. But here we are trying to call this server RPC method from client side. We are calling the server RPC method from client side, but client is not the owner of this game object, which is board. So we need to make this server RPC method in such a way that anyone who is not owner can invoke this function. For that, we need to add this option and trigger owner to be called false. Now we will testing starting as host on build and starting as client on unity side now if we click on the button of host then also sprite change on client and if we click on client board sorter then also sprite change on host board we can see that when we are changing sprite for a button using rpc then that button is interactable we need to make the button non interactable when calling using RPC. So let's 
go back to script so when we are changing the sprite of opposite side then we also make that button non interactable for that use dot button dot interactable equal to false in both server rpc and client rpc method let's test again starting and first on unity side and as client on build now when we clicking on the host now we can see that client's board sprite has been changed and the button is also non interactable no we can see that any player can click on more than one buttons for that we need to change the turn for the player then we need to set the turn for another player let's go back to script again now we will make this game as turn base so that player can click only on one cell on his turn after clicking on a cell we will change the turn for another player we will try to make the code as simple as possible for this we will introduce network variable inside game manager class a network variable is a way to synchronize a property or variable between a server and clients without having to use the remote procedure calls now we are creating a integer type network variable and giving it name as current turn and we will initialize the value with zero we can see that the first parameter is value we are giving that as zero and the second parameter is network variable read permission that means who can read this variable by default everyone can read this variable server and all clients can read this variable by default and we can change the option as or owner or everyone and the third parameter is network variable write permission by default server can write the variable we can change it to owner or server we will keep this as server so server can write the network variable for keeping it simple we will keep only the value parameter so current turn is a network variable of integer type yes default value is 0 now before clicking on a board cell we will check the current value turn value let's go inside the on click cell function of board manage we will check if the cell is clicked by host and if the current turn value is zero game manager dot instance dot current turn so to access the value of a network variable we need to use dot value the value property of the network variable so if current turn value is equal to 0 then we will change the sprite of button after changing the sprite on both this host side and on the other client side we will change the turn so let's make Give manager dot instance dot character dot value equal to one. Now I am copying this line, and similarly we will check if the cell is clicked by client and if the turn is of client that means the current turn value is 1 
then we will change the sprite on this client side and on the other host side so after changing the sprite we need to change the current turn well and this is called by client and we know by default network variable write permission is only by server so we need to change the current turn value inside a server RPC function because this is called by client so we will change the current turn value inside the change sprite server RPC so the client will call the server RPC function and inside that the network variable value will be changed we are making the value at zero so when any button or cell of the board will be clicked it will check whether it is host and if it is host whether its current turn value is zero then it will work and if this is client and current turn value called one only then the sprite will be changed So as you know the host is also a client so it is not good practice to check each client because when the time value will be 1 then also it will be invoked in the each client because host is also client so we need to check here as if not host it's not network manager dot singleton each host and if the current value is current turn value is 1 then we will change the sprite of client and then call server rpc to change the sprite on server as we are making the button non-interactable here and it, this is outside of condition so if any player maybe this is not turn off that player but clicking on the button it will make that button non interact so we need to use the line inside the condition block let's write the same line send this so when this will be the pillar task after changing the sprite this will make the button non interactable and only two players so we can check using each host and each not host but if there are many players we can check using local client id so for now we will keep this as simple as possible now go back to game manager class in which script we are using network variable we need to derive this class from network behavior now save the script and go back to unity editor For a network behavior derived class, we need to make that game object as a network object. So, unit will ask to make the game manager game object as a network object. To make the game manager game object as a network object, we need to add network object component to it. Let's click on add component on inspector and go to netcode folder and click on the network object script now the network object component will be attached let's build and test we are running two instances of our game let's start as host on the build 
and starting edge plant on the unity side now the board has been instantiated if we click on the board on client side we can see that it is not working because the network variable value was initialized by zero so we first can click on its cell and after clicking once it can click on another cell but now client can click on the board and after clicking once it cannot click again as the network variable value has been changed after one click so now player can click once on his turn and then the turn will be changed we can see that no game win or game draw logic has been implemented yet now we will add win logic to our game when any player will win both side will know that whether they won or lost let's come back to board manager script i have added this each one function already after clicking a cell on board this each one function will be called we need to pass button index to this function this each one function will return true or false if the return value is true then the player who clicked on the last turn will own else the game will continue inside the each one method at first we shall take the last click button sprite we will store last click button sprite on the clicked button sprite variable then we shall check column of the button if all buttons in that column have same sprite then the player will own Similarly, we shall check for row. We will check for the two diagonals. If all the cell of the diagonal has similar sprite or not. If any of this condition is true, then we will return true. And the player who clicked that button will own the game. And if no condition is true, then we will return false. You can use any logic, any game win logic for tic-tac-toe. I have used in a simple logic here. Let's go back to Unity Editor. Now we shall create a UI which will be shown when any player will win or loss. Let's create a panel. I am giving it a name as a result panel. Now we will Resize the panel and we will position it. Now, now I shall add a text to this. They, this text will so whether this player has won, loss, or the match is draw. Now we shall add a button to this result panel. This button will be used to restart the game. Now I am resizing the button.
let's change the button text touch play again when player will win or loss then this panel will be shown and the player can click the play again button to restart the game Let's center this button. Now click on the result panel that we have created now. Let's inactive this panel in the inspector. This um, panel will be shown when the player will win, win or loss or when the match will draw. Now let's go to game manager script. Now we will write a function to show this panel when player will win or loss. Now we will create to serialize field for the result panel and for the result text let's create a private game object name it as game end panel let's create a serialized field again this will be an text match pro UG world text means to we can use normal text but I am using here text means you G U R we need to import text tm t pro we need to import tm pro to use text means and I am giving the text name as message text msc text now we shall write a function to show this message let's make this as public function name it as show message This show message function will take a string as parameter. Inside the show message function, we will check whether this string or the parameter message is equals to one if one then we will make this message text that you one and we will make this game end panel active and also we need to show this game end panel at the op opponent side so when any player will win then there will be a message in the panel that you won and in the opponent side it will show that you lost we will check if this is host or client if this is host then we will call client rpc to show message on opponent side Actually, when this is host, then another side will be client, so we need to call client RPC. Else, if this is not host, then we need to call server RPC to show the win or loss or match or message. We'll write client rpc for showing the message on client side let's create 
ये क्लाइंट आर से पास है नेम इटैच ऑपोनेंट मैसेज क्लाइंट आर से एंड विल पास मैसेज व्हिच विल बी डिस्प्लेड ऑन द ऑपोनेंट साइड रिमेम्बर दैट वी नीड टू यूज द क्लाइंट आर पी सी साफिक्स ऑन ए क्लाइंट आर पी सी मेथड वी आर सेटिंग द मैसेज टेक्स ऑफ आवर पैनल विथ द मैसेज ऑफ दिस फंक्शन पैरामीटर एंड वी आर मेकिंग एक्टिव द पैनल एंड सिमिलरली वी विल राइट ए सार्वर आर पी सी फंक्शन एंड वी विल मेक द ओनरशिप इकल्ड फॉल्स because even if this is not on our this can call the server rpc method let's name this function as open end message server rpc we need to use the server rpc suffix in a server rpc method now we will change the panel text with our message parameter and then we will active that panel inside the also opponent message function we will call opponent message client rpc if this is host and if this is not host then we will call opponent message server rpc now we shall call the show opponent message function from show message we will pass the parameter as you loss because when this player will win then opponent will see that you lost and inside the show message function we will also check if the message is draw then we will set the panel text as game draw and we will show the game panel and also we will make this for opponent side so opponent side also show the game draw message that's why calling so opponent message with keep parameter game draw so we will call this so message function when game will be draw or any player will win for that let's go to board manager and board manager here is our each one function we have also added a each draw function inside each draw function we are checking if there is no empty cell then we will return true that means if there is no empty cell then the game is draw and if there is any empty cell then we will return as false now we will create a method let's create an private method name it as check result inside check result we will check if each one after every button click we will call this check result function and we will pass the index of the clicked button and after clicking the button we will call the check result function and inside that check result function we will check if the game won or not if the game won then we will call the show message function with parameter own we will call the game manager dot instance dot so message function and we will send the own parameter and else this means if the each one function returns false then we will check is game draw if each one equal to false then we will check for each game draw if each game draw is true then again we will call the so message function but this time we will send the parameter drop and we will call this check result function after each button click
will call the check result function for each button click. If any player that may be host or client will call the check result function after button clicked. We need to pass the button index which has been clicked to the check result function. Now let's save the script. Now let's click on the game manager's game object and we need to assign the game and panel. Let's assign the game and panel to game manager. Let's drag and drop this result panel to the game and panel and this result text to message text of game manager now let's save the scene and build now again we are running two instances of our game let's click on start host on every side and click on start client on the build now the game has been started now let's play so game is working fine now client has won and the game and panel has been appeared but that is the in the back side of the board that is not visible well properly To make the panel visible properly, click on the canvas in the hierarchy and then increase the sort order. Now we will reposition the board panel. For that, click on the board prefab and then click on the panel. We will increase the vertical position of the board panel. Let's save. Maybe you have not seen because the result panel was not visible properly. But when client on, then the result panel is showing. He will lose text on both sides. This need to be fixed. We can see that we are calling so opponent message from so message function, and we are sending you loss parameter. Now, so opponent function is checking if this is host, then call client RPC. And as we know that host is also client, so the client RPC is being called on both sides. So, you loss function will be shown on both sides, on client also, and also on host. So, we need to check that when we are calling client RPC, then if this is Host, then we don't run the client RPC function at host. So, you are checking here if this is host, then the client RPC will not work here because you only want to call the client RPC function on the client side only, not on host side also. But as host is also client, so client RPC is called on both host and client. So, we are checking if this is host, then it will return. Now let's save the script and build again to test. Starting edge host on unit side and starting edge client on the build side. Now the board has instantiated. Let's play. Clicked on host side and then on client. In inner post, 
and client and now the first now we can see that you one message on the first side and you lost on the client side so it is working fine but we need to add the play again function let's do it I am testing again to test whether the draw function is working or not let's start again Let's fill all the cells. Now, line turn. Post turn. Now, clients. Now, again, work. Game draw. Okay. Let's go to find the play again function. Now, we shall write a restart function. To restart the game, let's create a public function. Name it as restart. Inside restart, and first we will register the current board. Then we will spawn a new board, and then we will hide the result panel. Remember that destroy and spawn of board will be at server side. That is at first side. So at first we will destroy the board. For that we need to access the board. This new board game object which then instantiated earlier. For that we need to make this new board as global. So that we can access this new board from any other function. Let's we really have make this private. It is this declaration from here. So now we can access the new board from any uh, other function. And then we will call this spawn board. After destroying this new board, we will again call the spawn board function. Now we will check if this is host or not. If this is not host, that is if this is client, then we will call server RPC to destroy the port and to spawn a new port. And if this is host, then we will destroy the board and create a new board and we will call client RPC to hide the result panel at client side. Now we will check if this is not host. That means if this is client, then we will call server to destroy the board. For that, let's create a new function and name it as restart server RPC. This is a server RPC. So use the server RPC attribute. And inside this, we will destroy the current board, destroy a new board. And we will spawn in new board. So call the spawn board function. And we also hide the result panel at server side. So let's game and panel dot set active equal false. So at server side, it will destroy the new board and spawn a new word and then it will hide the result panel now call this restart server rpc function from class side 
now in the client side we also hide the result panel so we use the game and panel to selecting false now else that means if this is not client that means if it is server then we will destroy the current board and spawn a new board and we will hide the result panel on the server and we need to hide the result panel at client side so we need to create a client RPC buffer to hide the result panel at client side from server so let's create a client RPC buffer name it as restart client RPC make it private restart client RPC and inside this we will hide the result panel so this will be game and panel or say that it falls so as we know when we will call client RPC from host it will work both for host and client so we are calling the id panel client rbc function from here and it will work for both host and client let's save this script now we need to add this function on distant button click Now we will add this. Now click on the restart button, the hierarchy. And add the function on click. In the object, use the game manager object and select function from game manager script the restart function so when we will click the restart button then the restart when function of game manager will be called let's build again and test now we are running again two instances of our game let's play So host has on and if we click on play again then everything is working fine new board has been instantiated and we can restart play if we click on play again on client side then an error has been occurred the error is that only the owner can invoke a server RBC that requires owners. Let's go back to game manager script and we need to make the ownership false when we are calling server RPC. Inside game manager, we need to make this restart server RPC and required ownership equal to false. Let's save the script and build and test again. Now again we are running two instances of our game. Let's start host on memory side and start client on build. Now the board has been instantiated. Let's play. Now if we click on the client side then client also restarting the game and everything works fine there is no issue now clicking on client also working fine
restarting the game without any issue. Now clicking on play again again on the client side. Working fine. Turn also been changed after every game. But if we try to play two builds on two different devices on different network, then the game will not work because we need a dedicated server. Thanks to Unity Regular Service because we can connect players without need of dedicated server. To use Unity Relay Service, you need to install Relay Package. Let's go to Unity and go to Windows and the Package Manager. Select Packages from Unity to install. Now find the Relay Package. And click on install. Now the relay package will be installed. The relay package has been installed. We have installed the 1.0.5 version for the relay. And we are using 1.2.0 for the netcode for game objects. Now we will use this relay. For that, we need to link our project to Unity service. To link our project to Unity services, go to project settings. In project settings, go to Unity service. Now select organization. The organization may be your username. Then click on create project ID. Now we need to go to Unity Service Dashboard. For that click on the dashboard. Now browser will be open. You need to log in to Unity Services. After signed in to our Unity EMM service, then we can see the project dashboard. Make sure that our current project has been selected. My current project name is Multiplayer TikTok, and here it is showing that. Now click on the multiplayer on the left side. Now click on the relay. Now click on the setup relay. Now click on next. As we have installed the packages already, so click on next. We need to turn the relay on here. Turn on relay. Then click on next. Now click on finish. Let's go to Unity Editor again. Now click on the network manager in the hierarchy and in the inspector go to unit transport component and select the protocol type to relay unit transport. And set the scene. Now let's go to game manager script. To use relay service, player needs to authenticate with the Unity services. Authentication can be done in many ways like by signing in with Google or Facebook or signing in with credential. 
but for simplicity we shall use anonymous sign in fire player does not need to sign in with a credentials you need to automatically sign in user with unity service to use unity services at first we need to initialize the unity service for that use unity.services.core namespace then inside the start method write unity services dot initialize async this will initialize the unity service and initialize unity services we need to authenticate user with unity services for that we need to use unity dot services dot authentication now inside the start method after initializing the unity service we need to use authentication service dot instance thus sign in anonymously async we need to add the add keyword to this function call so that until this function execution done till the next statement will not be executed we need to use the async keyword with the start method to use add inside it let's go inside start host method we shall create relay here that means before starting host we need to allocate space on relay server for that we need to use relay service let's import unity.services.relay now we need to create allocation dot create allocation async we need to pass maximum number of clients or PRs except host who is allocating relay since tic-tac-toe is a two player game we need to pass one as parameter that means one player can join with host so we need to pass match players minus one as input now we will create and try and catch block so that if any error occurred during and create allocation then we can understand what the exception now let's you know write the catch block we will throw the relay service exception now i will print this coin in console the arrow that is the e now we need to get the join code for this relay allocation so that the other player can use that join code to join the relay for that <laughs> we need to call get join code async and we need to send the allocation for that we need to create an allocation variable we need to use the add keyword to call the create allocation async so that after the allocation done we can send the allocation to the get code async as parameter we need to use the async keyword to the start host function now we are sending the allocation to the get join code async function we will send the allocation dot allocation id to the get join code async function now let's make this function add this function will return a string so we are making a string variable name it as join code and make this function add now 
now to show this join for string we will use an text field for that we need to create a serialized field now declare a private text mesh pro name it as join for text now we will make the join for text dot text for the or join for string now the join code will show on the join code text. Client need to use that join code to join the relay created by first. We are using an input field where client will input the join code to join a relay. Now inside the start client function, we are using same as the above. We are inside try block, we are using relay service dot instance to join allocation async and sending the join code of input dot text as parameter this is the join for string and using catch block to print if there is any exception as soon as we have allocated the relay inside the start function we need to send data to this relay for that that we will send the host data to the relay to send host data to the relay server, we need to use the network manager, unit transport component. For that, use network manager dot singleton dot git component unit transport. Unit transport is inside unity dot network dot transport dot utp package, and call the set relay server data. We need to send relay server data to set relay server data function. For that, let's create a relay server data variable. We need to use networking dot transport dot relay. Now, name it as relay server data. new relay server data and inside it we need to send allocation let's send the allocation parameter which we have already created and we need to send connection type this is a string we can use udp or dtls we are using dtls here this is encrypted so we are using a dtls now we shall send the relay server data to the set relay server data function similarly we will send the client server data when joining a relay let's copy those two lines and here we will press dodge Now we will store the join allocation async result to a variable. Name it as join allocation. And make the start client function async. And we are using add keyword before calling the join allocation async. In the start host function, at first we are creating a real allocation. In the create allocation async function, so we are sending maximum plus numbers minus one as parameter, and then we will get a join code. To get the join code, we need to call the join code async functions, and we need to pass allocation id as parameter to it. And we will get the join code, and we will print it on a text field, and then we need to send the host data to the server relay server. For that, we are creating a relay server and using allocation and dtls as connection type then we are sending the relay server data to the function set relay server data and similarly in the client functions we are creating a join allocation using the join code we have got from the host 
So after joining the Alloga server, we will send the client data to the relay server. For that, we are creating a relay server data using the join Alloga server and DTLS as connection type. We have saved the script and come back to unity data. Now we will create a text mesh pro text field and we will create an input field. That text field will show the join code to the host and the input field will be used on by the client to input the join code to join the ring. Now click on the game manager in the hierarchy and in the game manager script we need to drag and drop the join code text that is the text mesh pro and the input field. Now save the scene and build. Now we are running two instances of our game. Let's start host on the Unity side. On click on start host, we will see the join code. Now this is the join code. We need to use this join code to start the client. Yes, on build side, input that join code. We got on host side. Now start the client. Now the port has been instantiated. Using the relay, we can play the game on defined device on defined network. So everything is working fine. 